Hey folks, welcome to today's class. In today's class, we are gonna be focusing on lower body movements, specifically hip slides and hip twists. And if you look at all of these movements as foundational building blocks of belly dance, there's a lot of other things we can build with it. So we're gonna take those slides and twists and make them into figure eights and jewels and dance with all of them. So let's get ready to warm up and let's get dancing. All right, let's take a nice deep breath up. And take it over and down. And roll it up. Wide stance, here we go. Two, three, four. Nice wide feet, getting those hips warmed up. Pushing the arms down. And circling around, like you're pressing them through something heavy like water. Let's do it again, push it down. Nice deep breaths as you raise the arms. Good, let's do that one more time. All right, now center those feet underneath you and reach. Little lunge to each side. Now let's do it nice and slow. Take it to one side. Take the arm over. Other side. Take the arm over. Nice deep breath through the middle again. Come down halfway flat back. Circle those arms around and stand it back up. Good, feet underneath you. Get those knees going, just a little wiggle in the hips. Good, raise those arms up. And take the arms and open. Now we're gonna stretch in and along the side. One arm up, bend that same knee. Feel that stretch in through the side, nice deep breath. Other side. Bend that knee, nice deep stretch. And breathe, take it a little faster. Good, last two here. Now roll those shoulders back. Back, push them down, up and then down. Good, take the arms, circle one and then the other. Good, two more just like that. Good, now reverse. Really big scoop, feel it all the way into your back. Good, we're gonna speed it up, tighten the abs, and we're going for a swim. <laughs> tighten the abs, feel this ab work. Keep the arms swinging. Good, almost there. Four, three, two, good. Widen your stance. Little under curve, bending the knees, little sway to side to side. Keep it going. Good, now just swing the upper body. Good, just a few more here. Good, come to center, circle the hands around. Done. All right, so let's quickly review our basic belly dance posture, and then we're going to get into our technique for the day. So when we walk into belly dance class, we're going to think about our feet being hip width apart, hip bone width, just inside the outsides of your hips. Feet are pointing forward, knees and toes are in alignment. So if you bring your knees all the way back to straight and then release ever so slightly, we're always in a micro bend when we dance. So tiny micro bend in the knees. We're gonna think about the pelvis resting underneath us. You can either think about tucking here in the lower abdominals or you can think of sort of slightly sliding your pelvis forward so that it stays underneath you to avoid any undue stress in the lower back from extra curve, right? So nice long spine. Chest is lifted, shoulders are rolled back and down, away from the ears, nice long neck and arms. When we drill, we'll often put them here in second position. Elbows are slightly in front of the body, wrists are flexed, fingers are engaged. If you want a little extra credit points, think about dipping that middle finger and bringing that thumb in slightly. So that's our belly dance hand posture, yeah? Nice tall spine, nice lifted chest, take a deep breath and we are ready to go. Yeah, so let's first look at our hip slide. So in our basic home posture, we're gonna be thinking about taking our hips side to side as though they are touching the side walls of the room. The trick here is to not involve the knees too much. Knees are soft, 
right? In our gentle bend to support the movement, but knees are not going to bend and straighten in this move because we're aiming for a side to side and not an up and down. And you can see the minute I start to bend and straighten my knees, I get a very natural up and down on the hips, which is a different movement, right? It's just wrong for today, but not wrong in general. Side to side with the hips is our hip slide, yeah? We'll be drilling this all in just a little bit as well. So let's just look at a couple of details here. If you can watch the level of your waistband or perhaps of your hip scarf, if you have one on and you can see yourself in the mirror, what you're aiming for is straight side to side, like an old fashioned typewriter, right? Or if it's the newfangled, like your iPhone sliding it closed, right? Or a Ziploc bag, straight side to side, no up and down. Really check out, especially if you've already done this move and you're familiar with it, check it out to see if you are equally as flexible on both sides is the right and the left going evenly, right? Let's do a couple nice and slow, pushing to one side, check out the level of your hips, pushing to the other side. One more time, pushing first to the right, and then to the left, yes? That's our hip slide. We're also going to be playing with our hip twist. So this movement, as we do it, we're gonna think about the hip twisting forward towards the mirror, towards the wall, but it's not coming from the knees. So if you wanna check out what's going on here with my knees, as I twist my hips forward, nothing is going on with the knees. You can get a lot bigger twist if you allow the knees to get into the picture, but we're not gonna be doing that today. We are going to think about the knees facing straight forward and the movement here happening in the hips coming from our obliques. So you can actually kind of stick your fingers, dig them in here on either side of the belly button, just a couple of inches either side. You push hard enough, kind of uncomfortable, yeah, you can feel it. You can feel those muscles tensing up. You can feel a hardening underneath your fingers as you twist your hip forward because that's your oblique at work, right? So that's how we're doing it. We're not really thinking about pushing with the butt or squeezing with the glute or doing anything with the knees. We're using the belly, right? We're gonna be using those obliques to twist forward today. Excellent. So this is our hip twist forward. When I take it slow, I think a lot about those obliques. But if we start to take it a little bit faster, I want you to be sure that the knees and toes remain in alignment. And now I'll admit, I start to think about just a little bit of a wiggle back and forth and allowing the hips to relax a little bit and allowing momentum to carry the movement a little bit more, right? So that's the hip twist that we'll be using today. Two other movements that we are building from this are the figure eight forward and the figure eight back. And I like to think of belly dance as a series of building blocks. Once you have your basic isolations, you can kind of build anything you want. And so this hip figure eight is just a combination of a hip slide and a hip twist. So check it out. Back in our home posture, knees slightly soft, pelvis nice and long. Think about twisting that right hip, say, forward to the front right corner of the room. Now if in that twist I take a slide, I have slid out at an angle. Now I'm gonna imagine scooping that right hip back like I am drawing a line down the right side of the room, from front of the room to back. And once I get about as far as I can go while my knees are still facing forward, I'm gonna take that slide, but my slide is happening at an angle, right? So I slide through at the angle, my hip touches the front left corner of the room, and I am sliding backwards here to the back left corner of the room sliding through at an angle for this particular figure eight, scooping with that right hip all the way to the back, sliding through at an angle, scooping with the left hip. Things to watch here, really think about the hips working independently. Obviously they're connected, right? It's all part of our hip bone joint, right? It's all, all one. But when I do this movement, I like to think about right hip is the star, left hip is doing almost nothing. It's almost kind of rotating in place. And then when I switch position and my right hip is underneath me, left hip is the star, it's doing all the rotating, right hip is almost staying in place, right? So think about scooping with one hip at a time as opposed to both hips. See if I start doing kind of both hips and I use both of my hips, then it's kind of a looser, more wobbly movement. So I wanna think about almost anchoring the hip that's immediately underneath me and allowing the other hip to really create the arc. I might be dating myself here, but it's like an old fashioned compass. If any of you ever worked with those, right, in math class where like the one end was like the pointy metal bit and the other end put your pencil, you put your pencil in it, you'd stick the pointy end in the paper and the pencil would draw the arc. So the hip that's underneath you is the pointy end stuck in the paper. And the other hip is the arc that's tracing the side of your figure eight front to back, right? 
So if you know what that is, I'm, I'm glad you're with me. If you don't, look it up on Google. Yeah, <laughs> and you'll see a picture, an old black and white photo of it. <laughs> so we've got our figure eight front to back. You can also build a figure eight back to front. Exact same idea, but we're doing things in the reverse order. So let's say we're gonna start on our left and twist our left hip back this time. We're gonna take the left hip to the back left corner, being aware that our toes and our knees stay pointing the same way. We wanna watch out for any undue stress on the knee by twisting the knee in a different direction than the foot is facing, right? So always be aware of that. Knees and toes always pointing the same way. So that will be what limits your twist. Your twist goes back into the back left corner. And now I'm gonna draw that line on the side left wall, scooping from back to front, sliding through to the back right, and then scooping through back to front. Once I make it as far as I can comfortably here with my pelvis nice and long underneath me, I'm sliding back to the other side, scooping through, sliding back to the right, and scooping through. You'll find you get a little bit of movement in the upper body, but our aim for today is to really isolate these hips underneath us, keeping the upper body square to the mirror, right? This is the one of the beauties and magic of, of belly dance isolation, right? Is that we've got all this great movement going on in the hips, but the chest is just like kind of hanging out here and floating on top of it. So think about the chest being nice and lifted away from the hips. If you find your chest wants to move a lot, you can imagine coming to this position with your hands, pushing a little bit of pressure in between those hands, putting it at the, at the chest, and imagine this sort of squaring your upper body and helping it remain in the forward facing position, right? Another thing you can check out is where is your posture of your shoulders in relation to your hips? Are you here where your upper body is kind of sitting on your lower body or are you here where your upper body is lifted and separated from your lower body? One great exercise for this, if you wanna think about reaching with the hands like you're climbing a rope up the ceiling, right up to the ceiling, but my legs are dangling. So it's all upper body strength, which I would never be able to do. But let's imagine, right? And if I do this and I finish climbing and I come back to center and I'm gonna let my arms and my shoulders release, but I'm gonna keep my chest right where it was. So this creates an awesome lift in my chest, gives me a huge canvas to work with as I dance and makes me look really confident, which is, you know, it's a bonus, right? So think about that nice lifted chest that way when you're doing either of these figure eights, the back to front or the front to back, that you don't find the upper body sitting down on top and moving with the movement, right? You lose a little bit of the magic and the isolation if the upper body is going too. If you lift up and away and allow the lower body to be the star, then it draws more focus to the move that you're trying to do. So let's go ahead and try drilling these movements with music. Our hip slide, our hip twist, and both of our figure eights. One other little idea that I'm gonna throw into the mix as we start drilling, the idea of movement. So with our hip slide, we're also gonna play with the idea of locomoting slightly with this movement, walking forward and backwards by sliding our hip over onto the foot that is walking. So when my hip is to the left, my right foot is free. I can sneak that foot forward, slide my hip over onto the right, and then I have the opportunity to sneak my left foot forward as all my weight is on my right. You're not gonna win any races with this, so the steps are very small, and you'll also notice I keep my heels very close to the ground. I'm not doing like a heel toe or a toe heel as I walk. I'm doing a little tiny flex in my ankle and basically like cleaning the floor with my feet as I move forward. So you're not gonna lift your feet very much. We are also going to change our weight with our twists. So we'll do our twists right underneath us, but we will also do our twists in this position where one foot is underneath and the other is posed, and then we will switch our weight. When we switch our weight, get your heel on the floor as quickly as you can and maintain the posture. Watch out for the hips sneaking behind you. Maintain that nice long spine all the way down through the pelvis as you switch from one foot to the other. Your heel may be lifted when you're in your final position on one foot, but as I shift to the other side, I'm gonna try to get that heel on the floor as fast as possible to aid in that transition. One other little bonus move I'm gonna throw at you today is the jewel. A basic jewel is kind of just a twist in the hips that we add to the end of a movement to create a little bling on it, right? And we're gonna play with it today with our figure eight from front to back. 
So when we get to that point, this is what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be stepping out just a little bit with that figure eight. We're going to be going from front to back, so starting in the front right corner, coming to the back, but instead of then sliding through right away, once we get to the back, I'm going to think of a little twist, a little extra twist. So you're going front to back, little twist, and then you finish, come through to the other side, front to back, little twist. This is our jewel. You can make it as small or as big as you would like, depending on the time that you have. I usually just twist twice, maybe. If you want to twist a bunch of times, you can. Play with it. This is your own personal style coming through. So it's just a little twist that happens in the middle of our figure eight to the side. And then for today, we're going to complete the movement and shift to the other side. You'll notice that when I do this jewel, I tend to want to keep my feet a little bit further apart. You also, if you're more comfortable, could do it right underneath you with feet parallel, hip width apart, like we practiced earlier. Shall we do this? All right, let's take a deep breath up. And here we go, hip slide. One, two, three, four, side to side. Feet are hip width apart, knees are soft, but they're not bending. Good, let's do a couple really slow. Here we go, two counts. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, we're gonna do slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. So it'll be slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Good. Keep that going, adding arms. Let's do that one more time. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. All right, just as slow. I'm bringing my arms to the side, gently mirroring my hips with my hands. Let's walk it. Four forward and four back. Here we go. Bring it front. And back again. Four more here. And now we're gonna switch to our twist. Here we go. Being sure those knees and toes are pointing in the same direction all the time. Little faster, here we go. Nice deep breath. Are you breathing? If you don't breathe during this one, you're gonna get a terrible stitch in your side, so keep breathing. Knees pointing forward, toes tracking forward. Good, keep that twist going. Can you move the arm smoothly? Good, let's cross them in the front. This is challenging, you got this. Let's try that one more time, pushing the arms up. Relax those shoulders, but strong arms. All right, holding it here. Sneak that right foot out. Very little weight on that right foot. I'm just using it to balance. Now let's take our weight to the right. Here we go. And hold it here, weight on the right. Angle yourself just a little bit to the right as you do this so you're not straight on. It looks nicer here at an angle. Beautiful. Now let's take it to the left, here we go. Slightly angle the body, be sure the knees and toes are still in alignment. Back to the right. Let's bring the arms up. Bring the arms down behind the head. Good, other side. Let's do that again. Over. And arms up. One more time to the other side. Good, bring the feet back underneath you. Take a deep breath up. We're gonna go into those figure eights, front to back. Let's go ahead and start on the left. Five, six, here we go. Nice and slow at first. Make sure we've got it under control. Keep it slow, one more time. Two, three, slide through. One, two, 
All right, a little faster. Here we go. One, two, one, two. Keep it going. Let's do slow, quick, quick, it's slow. Quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick. All right, shake it out. Let's go back to front, starting on the left. Same idea. Five, six, seven, here we go. Back, two, three, slide through. Breathe. You got it, not too fast, not yet. One more like this. All right, let's do two counts each. One, two, one, two. Keep breathing. Good, now slow, quick, quick. Slow, quick. Slow, quick. Slow, quick. Good. Good. Front to back. Front to back. Little twist. Front to back. Little twist. Front to back. Here's our jewel. Here we go. And stretch. All right, so now that we have drilled all of those movements, we are going to put them together into a little combination. I don't want our focus here to be memorization, so we are going to do this, what I like to call follow the bouncing butt style, <laughs> which is how I learned when I was taking classes in Egypt. It was just dance and follow, right? I'll make it fairly repetitive. We're gonna use all of our movements, the hip slide, the hip twists, the figure eight front and back and the jewel. I'll call out what we're doing and what we once we've gotten through the, the movements, we'll repeat them to complete the song. Are you ready? Let's do this. Five, six, hip slide walking. Walk it back. Hip twist to the right. Now do it to the left. We'll go back to the right at arms. And to the left. Figure eight, we're going front. And then we'll do quick, quick. Here, slow, quick, quick. Now let's add a jewel. Just keep it with the slow jewel. Good, here we go, slide. Take it back. So we're repeating here. Here's your twist. To the left. Adding arms. This time let's do that figure eight back to front. Slow for two, quick, quick. Slow for two. Let's do it just like that again. No jewel here. Taking it forward. Taking it back. Here's your twist. Add the arms. Let's go back to the front to back, figure eight. Slow, quick, quick. Feel free to play with the arms if you'd like. Here comes our jewel. Slow with a jewel. Slow with a jewel. Here we go. Slap. Maybe change up the arms. Here's our twist. Adding those arms, pulling up. Pulling down behind the head. Back to front, figure eight. Slow, quick, quick. Almost there, keep it going. And pose. Awesome job, you guys. This is really amazing that you can take those movements, put them together, and then dance it straight up to an entire song. Nice work. Let's go ahead and cool it down.
Nice work today. Let's go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths in. Let's take a deep breath up. And fold it forward, taking it all the way down. Releasing the head, the neck, the arms. Go ahead and shake your head yes. And shake it no. Bending one knee. And now switch and bend the other knee. And now bring the hips to the heels if that feels good. Now hips back up to the ceiling. And slowly roll it up, belly button towards the spine, chin to the chest, head is the last thing to come up. Good, roll the shoulders back. Good. Take one foot and place it behind the other. Bend the knees. Push that heel towards the ground. Raise that same arm up and over. Keeping it up over the ear. Tuck that pelvis underneath you. Lift your chest towards the sky. And don't fall down. Engage in the oblique to come back up to standing. Good, let's do the same thing on the other side, that IT band stretch, taking the foot behind, pushing the heel into the ground, taking that same arm up. Think about elongating in your torso. Arm goes up and over the ear, over the head. Tuck that pelvis underneath you, twist slightly to open your chest towards the sky, and breathe. Engage to pull back up to standing. Good, let's round the spine. So rounding everything forward like a standing cat cow. You can think about here, twisting the hips ever so slightly. I like to pull my right elbow and my right hip away from each other by twisting. And then on the other side, same thing, pulling elbow away from hip, the dynamic tension there. Good, let's open up the chest, pushing the chest through the arms, arching the back. Up and then round it again. Good. Bring it back up to standing. And just let the body melt a little bit to one side and circling it around. And then release to the other side. Same thing. One more deep breath up, and exhale. Thank you so much for joining me for this little Technique and Combinations class. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you would like to get more classes just like it delivered to you on a regular basis. I really appreciate you being here. I would love to hear your thoughts, and I look forward to dancing with you soon.